Got a good one, guys. The eight pound test, bone puppy. Yes, look at that, guys. Look at this. I had to go wading for him. Everything loves a puppy. But there he is. That fellow right here was taken on a puppy. A bone puppy. Hey everybody, welcome to Hills and Gills. Chuck here with you today. And I know this video has been a long time coming. Before we get started, I want to thank everybody for checking out my number three and number two all-time favorite top water lures but today we're looking at number one i'm going to show you some techniques on my all-time favorite it is nothing more than the czar puppy right there bone color i have caught more big smallmouth whether i'm fishing major lakes big river small rivers small streams on the czar puppy than any other top water lure i'm talking chug bugs torpedoes these jitter bugs you name it i love them all and i use them all regularly but this is my number one i'm talking 20 plus inch small mouths i'm talking small mouth four and a half five over five pounds this came off this bad boy right here and my favorite color is bone i can't beat it i've used the clear ones i've used the frog color ones i've used all different colors in the puppy at the that uh heating makes but the bone is the one i've caught and had the best luck with. Today, I'll show you some of my techniques, how I use it in the river today, whether I'm pocket fishing, or I'm fishing in current, and just give you an idea of how I use it if you're just now getting into topwater lures, or you may think about getting into throwing a dog walker like the puppy in your favorite river or stream. So without further ado, let's get out there and walk the dog a little bit. As you can tell, this is the same place that we've done video three and two, and the reason I like this spot is because if you're wade fishing, whether it's a stream, small river, or whatever, this is what you're gonna run into. You're gonna run into pockets like this right here. You're gonna have current shows, as I call it, running in, breaking into another pocket. And I'm gonna show you my technique for pockets, currents, and swift water, like right down through there, how I throw the puppy. Let's get with it. Okay, let's talk about wading up the river and you've got current coming down. I'll show you a little demonstration here. I'll cast right up next to that swift spot and I'll just start working that lure and I'm steady reeling, steady reeling. I'm keeping up with that current. Have a look, there's one. There we go. There we go, guys. Got a little smally. Now, what I was doing, I was just steady reeling and I was just twitching that lure, keeping up with the current as it's coming toward me. And you can see, got a nice little smallmouth right here out of the river just then. Smallmouth don't have time again to diagnose it, to look at it, to see what it is. All they see is a small bait like fish coming across the top. And they're, if they're laying in water like it's right here, they're feeding. And they're gonna come up thinking it's an easy, quick meal and they're gonna blow up on it. And they've been times, you know, it's been so glary, it's been so swift. I've not even seen the hit. All I do is just feel the tension of the fish and I wrap back on him. So never pice up areas like this when you're fishing with a puppy or any kind of little small dog walker. You're gonna miss out on a lot of smallmouth doing that. First thing we're gonna do is look at when you're wading up toward a big pocket of water. You can see right here where the show is starting to break in and the current starts about 10 yards up through there. It's really picking up, moving into this uh, bottleneck right here. So the first thing I wanna do when I get to an area like this, a lot of time, if you're fishing early morning, late evening, cloudy conditions, these smallmouths will move out of these pockets and they will move right into this shallow water right here, feeding on bait fish and crawfish. And so I just cast straight across and then I just start slowly working it in. Now, I'm not putting no pressure behind it because I'm letting that current work for me. All I'm doing is just popping it and taking up the slack, and right there we go. Right there we go. 
Did you notice right when I got it out in the middle, I wasn't, and by no means, I was putting pressure on that lure, bringing it in. I had a lot of slack in that line. I was allowing that current to pull that bait down the river for me. I was letting it do the work for me. All I was doing was just keeping action on it. And we got a smiley right here. A little fellow, but he came up and killed the puppy right there just then. Always cast across. Keep slack in your line, keep that bow in your line. Just twitch that tip, allow that current to work it down the river for you. And any smallmouth that's in that shallow water right there, you're gonna come up and kill it. You know, if you're fishing late morning, you know, early evening before the sun goes down, always remember these big smallmouth could be laying right out in the middle and they don't care to come up 10, 12 foot deep. I've had them come out of pockets of water. I know 10 plus foot deep right out of the middle and ate it. And I've caught some of my biggest smallmouth right in the middle of these little deep pockets like this right here. Yeah, I hit the other side of the bank, but I work that lure all the way back in. I don't waste no water when I'm casting a puppy. I leave my rod tip about 10 or 11 o'clock. I know some people does it different. This is just me when the the lures out there at a distance i'm like at 10 or 11 we're going to bring it all the way in here and as the lure gets closer when it gets about 15 yards from me 10 or 15 yards up close i start bringing my rod tip down to about nine and i'm working it to my left to the side and then i'll eventually as the lure gets right up close to me i'll have my rod tip down right next to the water so I'll start out with my rod tip at 11. As my lure gets closer, when it gets about halfway in or a little bit closer, I start bringing that rod tip down to keep that action working good. And then eventually when it gets right up next to me, my rod tip will be right next to the water. And remember, if one comes up and hits it, do not jerk till you feel the weight of that fish. I've done it, it happens. I'll have one come up and swarp at it and I'll jerk and I'll miss the fish. I've just held my cool. I just keep working it. They'll come up, hit it. They'll come up and hit it. And then finally they come up and the hooks get to them. I feel the weight on the tip of the rod. I wrap back on him and I got in the fight is on. But let's talk about switching it up. You may cast out to a spot that looks good and you may just do the typical lazy dog walk in. And you may not get a strike out of that. Always cast back over to that spot. See what the bass wants. You may want to let it sit there for a second or two and then start ripping it in, as I call it. Get hit working suffice that it almost tries to stop on you. Bass are predators. Try to get that reaction bite. Make them think that another fish, another predator is chasing a bait fish or it's, a, it's been wounded by another one and that looks like an easy meal uh, coming in. And you can get a lot of reaction bites out of the puppy by just ripping it across or just do the stop and go flip the lure out let it set go three or four foot with it stop let it set one two even three seconds then get back walking the dog again let it go three or four foot stop it again you don't know how many times doing that action right there when it stops between that one two or three second time i've caught some really big small map doing that so when you stop it be ready because they will come up and kill it like that so that's three techniques to do with the puppy fishing down river say you fish this big pocket of water right here and you get into a spot where it's starting to bottleneck up you got your show you're going into another small section of the river right down here, a small pocket. But right in here is an excellent spot to pick up smallmouth. Just like when I was talking about if you're wading up river, them smallmouth is going to be laying right where that deep water uh, ends and that shallow water starts. Where at a lot of that current is to pick up bait fish coming up or going out into different pockets of water. That's just like a bridgeway for bait fish right there to move back and forth up and down the river. So I'll show you my technique when I'm using a puppy. I will cast to the other side. I never cast in the middle. And then I'll allow that current to bring my puppy into the strike zone. Uh, taking up much line, I'm just barely reeling it. 
allowing that lure to stay in that strike zone because the current is helping me work the lure. All I'm doing is just barely giving it little twitches and I'm getting maximum action out of that lure right now due to the current that is pulling against me. When you get to a show like this, you can have small mouth laying in here feeding on crawfish. Uh, manners, and like on the other side where it's kind of eddy, that's a lot of time where they'll be laying, but never pice up swift water like this because a lot of feeding smallmouth could be working this area here, and all I'm doing is just twitching it and letting it fan around into the current through the strike zone. I'll give you a little demonstration here. I'll cast over to the other side. I'll work a little bit across a potential strike zone. And then when I get into current, I bring my rod tip down and I just allow to work down through there. Just I'm barely touching the handle when I'm doing this. Just keeping that line tight. And you can see that it works all the way in for me. I'm getting that action of that lure. Potential spot over there, you might catch you a smiley. You see that weed's going down through there. And you see how it's kind of eddy in there. Then you got all that bottleneck current that's going down river right here. You never want to keep your rod down when you're uh, casting across current like that. Reason being, if your line gets in that water, you're gonna get the rainbow effect. You'll be bringing your lure in, the line's gonna start pulling down river with the current, and your lure is gonna completely leave the strike zone, and it's gonna start pulling down toward the current. We always wanna keep that rod tip as high as possible. I'll show you a little demonstration here. We'll cast right down the edge, that weed bed right there. I've got my reel almost up to neck level with me, and I've got the line completely out of the water. And that way I can work all the way up the edge of that weed bed. Keep that rod tip high and work it in. That way you'll be able to work it all the way to where the current starts and you'll be able to fish that whole strike zone down through there. A lot of times river smallmouth, they'll be laying right in the edge of that current. You can see how the current's going down. Then you've got your eddy water right there. They'll lay right off the edge of it, waiting on bait fish laying out of the current resting and you know they're predators they're waiting on anything to come out of that current and they're going to ambush it now when i'm throwing a puppy again i'll cast right down the edge of it and i will keep that rod tip high i don't want my line in the water even though it's going to work doing that when you get it halfway in your line is going to start rainbowing out into that current and then your lure is just going to cut right out into it but if you keep your rod tip high, I'm about 11 o'clock right now. I'm keeping it over the current. I'm working all the way up the edge of that strike zone, as you can see. Now, that's not saying when you get done fishing, you know, the best spots, what I'm talking about. I always cast right down the current. And then I just barely work it. If I work it fast, the lure's gonna dive on me. But if I'm just barely work tipping that rod tip, about 11 o'clock this is a slow and patient way to work a puppy in it's kind of slow because if you get too fast it's going to dive on you in that current you just got to work slow take your time allow it to work up it just like it's doing right there keeping that rod tip about 10 or 11 o'clock always be patient especially when you're fishing the swift water because if you try to work it too fast that lure is going to dive down and just going to come straight in. Then it's going to pop up. Then it's going to dive. It's because if there's a big smiley laying in there or chasing bait fish in there, it's going to come up and it's going to absolutely explode on it and smash on it. And one last thing, guys, before we quit, that's about hit for me on the techniques I use in a river. And like right in here, there's a lot of chunk rock in the water. I don't know if you can see them. Now with a puppy, when I know there's a lot of big rocks underwater, potential smallmouths laying between them, one thing I like doing is casting across them. And then as I'm working that puppy in, I'll be going across that big flat rock. And right when I get in the deep section between them, I'll dead stop it for one second. And then I start working it again. I'll work it three or four foot to another dark hole in the in the river. I'll let it sit there for a second. And I've literally seen them come out of them deep little cuts between them rocks and just come up and just cream them. 
Well guys, I want to thank you for joining me on my puppy right here, Technique, my number one all-time favorite topwater lure. Um, I've caught more smallmouth out of the river, topwater, using this little fella right here than any other lure, and in the lake when it comes to smallmouth. It is what it is. I've been fishing well over 40 years and been using these many years. And when you're fishing like a river area, you're going to be dealing with current. Whether you're wading up river, down river, you're going to run into uh, swift water, what I call shows, around your pockets and stuff. Don't pass up at it. I use a puppy when I'm in the river. I don't care if it's swift. I don't care if it's shallow. I don't care if it's deep pockets, shallow pockets, chunk rock. I'm throwing it. I never miss a spot. I hit every single spot in a river with a puppy and it is just an excellent lure and I always remember one of the best ways to tie them on is with the loop knot like I showed you. I got a link down in the description if you want to check that out. I've also got a link down in the description for my number three and number two lure if you'd like to check them out. I'm going to end this video with saying thank everybody for watching. I hope you subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. We will much appreciate that. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here, go home, get some food. Brandon's coming in in the morning. We're going to go to a nice river and do some smallmouth fishing. Maybe even throw in the puppy. We'll see you right here in Nixon. Don't forget to like us, guys. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We would be more than appreciate to have you. Have yourself a great day. Chuck's out of here.